Hello and welcome to the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show. My name is Renata von Scharner. I'm the founder and president of the Charles River Conservancy. And this show, guess what, is about the Charles River. And today we have an amazing expert and that is Charles Sullivan. Welcome, Charles. Thank you, Renata. Charles is the executive director of the Cambridge Historical Commission and has recently co-authored um, this book and it is an amazing book you can see it and i want you to get it i want you to read it and today we're gonna have a few jewels out of this book and they are about the charles river but there are a lot of jewels in there there are a lot a lot of that and this is actually the second show that charles sullivan and i are doing um, we already did a show and if you missed it you can find it on YouTube by googling Charles River Conservancy and Charles Sullivan um, or Building Old Cambridge and so um, you can find it there and this is where the Charles River Conservancy information is and this is the book um, building all Cambridge and there will be information at the end of this show where you can get this book I think every bookstore and even the Commission has it absolutely so and then you've been giving quite a few you've been giving quite a few lectures recently yes I have good yeah, including at the um, Cambridge Public Library on April 27th and was that filmed that will be fi uh, filmed yes. it will be filmed yeah excellent so that probably also will be available on YouTube and that will cover other topics than the Charles River? Because, yes, other um, topics it, having to do with Old Cambridge. With Old Cambridge. Well, it's an amazing, uh, amazing jewel. But we will now resume um, our talk about the river and pick up where we left it. And so I'm giving it to you, Charles, to pick up where we left it. I think we left it at about that time, um, late in the 19th century. And here we are, back at the river. Back at the river. Well, um, the first part of this talk, or the first talk, focused on the natural river and the river as an avenue of commerce, uh, the commercial traffic on the river, uh, schooners and barges uh, that um, brought cargoes up into Cambridge uh, until about 1892. But recreational use of the river began around the time of the Civil War, when Harvard launched its first um, boats on the Charles developed some boathouses down along the river uh, here at the foot of uh, Duell Street uh, and Flag Street uh, and also the, in association with the college rowing programs there were several boat builders, shell builders who were quite famous uh, in the Northeast who settled in Cambridge and built, built craft for the Harvard teams and mm -hmm. for others. And we see that we see the water level that at that time the the Charles was still tidal, which obviously affected the, the, the boats very much until about 1910 when uh, they built the Museum of Science. So, and we also see the Memorial Hall. So that was built after the, after the Civil War. Yeah, that was completed about 1873. Yeah. Um, and that's the original tower that um, is back in place today. Yeah. So this is looking down from the um, what's today the Anderson Bridge, looking downstream at high tide on a very cold winter's day. It looks as though the river is, uh, is frozen or is about to freeze. That's the original Weld Boat Club on the left, uh, Harvard's Weld Boat Club. Is it at the same location as today's Weld? Same well? location yeah. as today's Weld Boat Club. And in the distance is the 300 foot long uh, coal shed of Richardson and Bacon, uh, where they brought in coal by barge and schooner uh, to sell to householders and for the for the university. Uh, so, so what is on that location now? Where is this warehouse, the coal warehouse is? That location is roughly Winthrop House of Harvard, um, mm -hmm. Harvard University. Yeah, and so the church behind that would be what? That would be the Old Cambridge Baptist Church up on Massachusetts Avenue. All right. And um, the, the coal wharf was actually um, Memorial Drive runs right through that site because it projected out into the river, as I think you'll see in another another slide a little bit later on. Yeah, yeah. 
So a little bit further downstream was the original boat house of the Riverside Boat Club. Unlike some of the uh, other old Cambridge boat clubs, the Riverside Boat Club was founded by working men at the Riverside Press, which was Houghton Mifflin's printing plant on the Charles River at the uh, corner of Western Avenue. And again, this is the same location as the Riverside Boat Club today? No, um, this building burned in um, about 1900 and the um, club moved. At, by that time, the city controlled the riverfront and uh, wanted the um, land for Memorial Drive. So this is between River Street and Western Avenue. Okay. So further up the river yeah. than it is today. Yeah. And uh, so what were the buildings on either side? Well, on the left is the coal wharf of the Cambridge Electric Power Company. Uh -huh. They got their fuel by barge. And on the right is one of the buildings of the Riverside Press. Yeah, and, and obviously all, all these buildings gone. All gone. All gone. So uh, there was this that sort of informal recreational use of the river, but the idea of the river as uh, part of a, a park or urban development scheme originated much earlier in the 19th century. The first practical scheme was published in 1875. It was developed by a Cambridge uh, man, Charles Davenport, who had had a factory on Main Street in the 1840s uh, building railroad cars. At that time, uh, tide flats backed up to his building and he began purchasing the, the, uh, the tide flats that were covered with water at high tide and not of much value to anyone else. So um, by 1875, he developed this concept of park land on both sides mm -hmm. of the Charles. What a wonderful concept. I still wish that would, could be implemented. It, it's a wonderful it could. concept. It, yes, of course. And, and part of his concept was parkways, um, mm -hmm. roadways for pleasure driving. And on the Cambridge side, the parkway would begin at today's Longfellow Bridge and go up to Harvard Square. Mm -hmm. On the Boston side, um, it started at the, at the dam, at the future side of the dam, and then uh, went down to... Um, BU Bridge. Well, that bridge would, would be the BU Bridge. Uh, yeah, yeah. Roughly. So Charles Davenport's um, um, idea uh, really took root, and his, he founded a company that built the seawall uh, that uh, stands in front of MIT and filled in the land and began selling lots um, to developers. It wasn't very successful, but uh, MIT moved across onto that land in 1916. And, and obviously in your book, but this is also the cover of the book by Carl Hagland called Inventing the Charles River, also the same MIT press, and Carl describes that. So I will have to send people there because otherwise we're not going to get through all the images. So I'm pushing yeah. you forward here. Yes, well, so um, parts of the Charles River were quite scenic, but it was a public health hazard in the um, late 19th century. It was tidal, um, but all the sewage of all the surrounding communities emptied into the Charles. At low tide, the um, sewage would spread out on the flats and bake in the sun, and the dust would fly around. There were malaria epidemics and so on. So this scenic view looking up from the Riverside Press past uh, the Western Avenue Bridge mm -hmm. towards Harvard Square is kind of idyllic, but by comparison, the next slide uh, shows the true condition along the river. Uh, this is an outhouse uh, perched on the river bank uh, just below Harvard Square, about where the um, Kennedy Park is today. Mm. Um, the solution that, was that, that that's fine. Yeah. Uh, the, the solution was an interceptor sewer that the state built on both sides of the Charles to intercept the the private and sort of rudimentary sewers mm. that that drained directly into the Charles, collect all that sewage and carry it to a pumping station at Columbia Point. That's what made park development along the river possible. Yeah. Now we're coming now to a very important person along the Charles River. Yes, and this is Charles Elliott, who's the son of President Elliott of Harvard uh, University. Charles Elliott was interested in landscape um, as a young man. He trained with Frederick Law Olmsted, set up as a private practice and in private practice uh, became an advocate for metropolitan park planning. He joined, um, or he, he, as a private practitioner, he consulted with the uh, state 
Park Commission and also with the Cambridge Park Commission. Cambridge did not join in any of the state metropolitan planning ventures, instead set up its own Park Commission in 1892 and took the entire river frontage uh, in one uh, act of eminent domain. Uh, Charles Elliott, being a consultant for municipalities on both sides of the river, uh, was able to do master planning, even though Cambridge resisted being part of any master plan. So this was his original report to the Cambridge Park Commission uh, that shows um, the, the river from one end to the other. Part of the problem was that the uh, decision to dam the river was controversial and wasn't made until nearly 20 years later, so he had to design uh, conditions for the banks that would allow the the mudflats to be made safe, sure. um, but avoided seawalls, which were not conducive to enjoyment of the river. Uh, mudflats today they are. <laughs> and yes, well, this is looking down uh, downriver from about the site of Mount Auburn Hospital. That's Mount Auburn Street. Uh, we're looking towards Harvard Square. That's a, a neighborhood called the Marsh on the left and the Granite Wharf um, in the immediate foreground. This is an area that was the first um, sort of trial run for Charles Eliot's park plans. So if you go ahead a little bit, um, this is his plan for, it's called Section G, but it was the first section of his um, scheme to be built by the city, starting at Kennedy Street on the right, um, with a section ending at about Spark Street on the left. But between the foot of Ash Street um, or Hawthorne Street and Spark Street was the marsh for which the marsh neighborhood was named. Uh, it was essentially bottomless, and so he ended Memorial Drive at the foot of Hawthorne Street, where you can still turn off today. And the wonderful sycamore trees, are, we can see and them the here, they were planted. The yeah. London plane trees, popularly yeah. known as sycamores, are here as a prominent feature. Yeah. So this view is taken from the, the top of a chimney uh, that, of a power plant that stood where um, Elliott House is today, looking upstream, and the barges mm -hmm. in the river are parked uh, opposite the, the, uh, the brick wharf. Uh, just beyond them is the, the marsh, uh, the area where the river uh, bank becomes extremely uh, difficult to deal with. The, uh, mm -hmm. the banks are being reshaped on the Cambridge side. On the Boston side, it's still a natural salt marsh. Yeah. The um, development of the river meant that bridges became uh, much more critical than they had been before. The, the Great Bridge, uh, as it used to be known at, um, at the foot of Kennedy Street, was built in the early in 1638. Um, it had been rebuilt as recently as the end of the Civil War. It had a draw, but it was very narrow. Once Harvard built the stadium in 1903, uh, you'd have 20 or 30,000 people uh, across the river on wow. game days, and uh, the bridge was clearly inadequate. Well, it's like Boston Calling is coming to the Harvard Stadium, so there will be crowds Abs again. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the War Department insisted on uh, having uh, unfettered access to the uh, Watertown Arsenal, so there needed to be draws in these bridges uh, until finally um, Harvard convinced President Taft that public interest was um, in letting a lower clearance bridge be built, and that's today's Anderson Bridge, mm -hmm. um, which um, in this view, uh, that's still the Great Bridge, the um, Boston Elevated Railway Power Plant, where Elliott House is making smoke. The parkway has been completed in front of that, and just to the right of that chimney is the site of the Richardson and Bacon Coal Wharf. And on the Boston side, on the left, uh, Soldiers Field Road has been completed to, um, um, uh, to the bridge, but in the foreground where the business school is, it's there's nothing ending. happening. Yeah. So the Weeks Bridge um, was another ornamental bridge actually built by Harvard or built for, by a donor for Harvard to connect the campus to the business school on the other side. I, I mean, ornamental bridge, but it, it carried steam, I, I believe. It, that is, it does, was, yeah. And that, it had a function. It was that, um, connected to the business school. That's right. Yeah. So um, park development, it was essentially complete by 1914 when Cambridge completed Memorial Drive and it was possible to drive an automobile down the entire length. The uh, Cambridge Park was transferred to the Metropolitan District Commission in 1922. Um, 
but Cambridge was still thinking about parks. Um, the issue of connecting at the Elliott Bridge was still, it had been something that had been proposed by Charles Elliott in 1890, uh, had not been constructed, uh, was not constructed until after World War II. In the 1930s, the Cambridge Planning Board came up with a scheme to actually move the bed of the river. They thought it'd be cheaper to build a bridge on dry land. And then uh, once that was done to excavate a new channel that was uh, south of the original channel, this would have, however, added to Cambridge at Boston's expense. Um, Boston was not having any of it. And um, finally, in 1952, uh, the Elliott Bridge was completed, connecting the parkway systems yeah. on both sides. Uh, well, if you just joined us, this is um, Charles Sullivan from the Cambridge Historical Commission. And if it's going too fast, which of course it always is because I want to see the maps, you can then afterwards look, not only you can get the copy of the book, but you could also then look at the YouTube. So we're going to go right back into the show here to have you look, oh, we see now new buildings here. Well, we're seeing ourselves on this <laughs> screen also. All right, I don't know. Um, let me see if I can, um, let's see if we can. Okay, that's we better, go. thank you. So um, the unfinished business at the end of World War II was the uh, construction of the Elliott Bridge, but also the extension of Memorial Drive beyond the foot of Hawthorne Street. As it originally ended um, at Mount Auburn Street at the foot of Hawthorne, um, all the traffic coming off Memorial Drive had to proceed over local streets um, to reach Fresh Pond Parkway and other destinations to the west. So the idea of building along the north bank of the Charles beyond uh, past Longfellow Park uh, was also part of an early plan. Uh, the Cambridge Boat Club and others resisted um, successfully until after World War II, but finally by 1947 the MDC prevailed and here is the Cambridge Boat Club at its original site at the foot of Ash Street is being prepared to be jacked up and moved mm. to its current location um, uh, quite a distance upstream. So the, this slide is looking downstream. Um, and from about uh, the site of 1010 Memorial Drive, the Cambridge Boat Club is still on its original site off there in the distance uh, up against the Memorial Drive apartments. But the riverbank, uh, which is now a grassy lawn uh, in this slide, is just about to be replaced by um, the uh, extension of Memorial Drive. So by um, about the time the Elliott Bridge finished, uh, Memorial Drive extension was completed up to Gary's Landing, up past Mount Auburn Hospital, and the, um, the rotary there destroyed the historic character of Gary's Landing that you saw in one of the earlier slides. Mm -hmm. So um, that was not the end of it, uh, however, for Memorial Drive. The MDC, um, which then controlled the parkways, was um, enamored of um, easing traffic. Uh, the parkways were intended to be park drives, pleasure drives. They are never intended for commercial traffic or for daily, even for daily commuter traffic. But of course, uh, after the construction of Route 2 in the 1930s, there was an enormous demand from the western suburbs down through Cambridge along Alewife Park Parkway to Memorial Drive and into Boston. So in the 1950s, the MDC began to think about putting underpasses under um, Kennedy Street, mm -hmm. under River Street and Western Avenue, as they had done at Massachusetts Avenue the in the 1920s, yeah. and, and I end on the Boston side. And on the Boston side, of course, uh, they were pushing the, ex the construction of Stora Drive. So um, this is a rendering that was actually published in Time Magazine in 1964 by a community group that um, began to agitate against the MDC's plans, which would have entailed um, cutting down, clear-cutting all of the London plane trees, yeah. the, the uh, so-called sycamores, that the city had planted in the 1890s. <clears throat> so a, a campaign um, developed uh, that uh, was masterminded by uh, some geniuses of publicity to um, yeah. oh, John Mood and, John Mood, and Eddie Bernays and, and Edward Bernays, Bernays the yeah. father of public relations yeah. who yeah. had retired to Cambridge was in his uh, quite an advanced age at the time 
he didn't think Save the London Plain Trees really resonated with people. So he said, well, let's call it Save the Sycamores. And that was the, um, yeah. the byword, even though those trees aren't really sycamores, but that's how people know them today. And they changed themselves to <clears throat> those trees. People changed yeah. themselves. Yeah. The, uh -huh. um, the MDC uh, brought out police dogs. Um, the, um, uh -huh. There were demonstrations at the State House. And finally, uh, the government saw uh, the light and agreed to leave Memorial Drive alone. And that's basically uh, the condition is which yeah. is left today. All right, well, I'm going to take you on to a whole other subject, swimming well, in the Charles. Swimming in the Charles. Swimming in the Charles was actually a, a major thing. And there were there was swimming in East Cambridge, on the Cambridge side. Um, in East Cambridge, they um, there were floating swimming pools, basically barges with that allowed water in. Um, and then at Magazine Beach and at Gary's Landing, um, the Cambridge Park Commission continued to operate a bathing beach at Gary's Landing until the extension of Memorial Drive, until about 1949, when <clears throat> all swimming in the Charles closed. So this is at Gary's Landing, just below Mount Auburn Hospital. And it wasn't that the water from. was cleaned it. It's just they didn't know that it was sturdy. I think it was more of a matter of ignorance than uh, well, public health. <laughs> yes, I think so. But after the war, uh, suburbanization really um, brought a lot of um, environmental damage to, to the river. Mm -hmm. uh, the next slide shows the, what happened to the beach. This is um, looking down at that beach. Um, and you can see with Mount Auburn Hospital on the left, uh, one of the early buildings, and you can see on the right the advance of road construction. This is fill being placed to um, expand the riverbank, but in the immediate foreground, there's the beach, and you can see there's still a ladder and mm -hmm. a, uh, a, a life, life ring, yeah. a life ring for uh, for, for rescue, yeah. ladder for rescuing on the ice, and the life ring for rescuing swimmers. Yeah, yeah. So finally, in um, 1949. Um, after a number of shorter closures, the uh, coliform count in the Charles River became uh, so high that uh, the MDC decided this was it. Um, so 1948 was the last full year of swimming in the Charles, 1949. Mm -hmm. These girls appeared at Magazine Beach um, and were told nothing doing. Um, a year or two later, the state built the present swimming pool at Magazine Beach, and yeah. it's operated it ever since. Yeah. Well, um, we have come almost to the end of the show, so I just this is really just a, a taste of what's in this book. I mean, this is what about one percent of one percent that we saw today, but I hope that gave you the idea that you really need to read that book, and I want to thank you for. Bringing, bringing all that material to us. I think this is an amazing gift for Cambridge, for historic preservation, for our understanding of our history. So that is a, a wonderful gift. And thank you very much and to Susan Maycock for doing that. So, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's well, a real pleasure to show this off. Yeah. So um, we are now going to show some information that gift can, tells you how you can, can hold of Charles Sullivan and the Cambridge Historical Commission. And I hope you look out for lectures about this book because there's nothing like you talking about it live. And um, I know you've been very helpful also for Magazine Beach to Kathy Susie uh, about the Powder House, which is the oldest building on the river. We didn't really talk about that. That's uh, true. So, um, you've been very involved in the Charles River. You've, you've given tours, and I hope you continue to do that because to sit in a boat, ride on the Charles, and have Charles talk about the Charles River, um, I hope you will continue to do that. Well, after all, my, my children called it Daddy's River <laughs> when they were young, so I feel authorized to talk about it. <laughs> well, I have a, a, a son. Um, who for a while called himself Charles, and, and some people thought it was because of the river, but anyway, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a powerful name. So um, this is the information um, that helps you find the Cambridge Historical Commission, and you also have copies for sale of the book uh, but every bookstore, of course, has it. Every bookstore in Cambridge and at the Cambridge Historical Commission here and online. 
Wonderful. Um, well, I want to thank you again for that and thank you for coming today and this show will be on YouTube and um, and now you will see of how you can find out more about the Charles River Conservancy. We are a non-profit. Uh, we have about 40,000 volunteers and supporters. We do um, volunteer cleanup events. Earth Day is one of the biggest ones. Uh, we're also building a swim park in North Pine Park. We built a skate park. We help make it easier for bicycling. So here is the information um, of how you can find us. Thank you very much for joining us and thank you Charles. Thank you.